So Laita is one of the most iconic photographers we've talked about here on the channel, and he is perhaps known for his very unique style that plays with reflections, colors, shapes, contrasts, and so looking at his photography is looking at an image that can be a masterclass in all of these elements. And because his photography wasn't discovered until his early 80s, there's naturally a lot to be uncovered, there's a lot to be rediscovered, and so today, with the help of this book right here, The Unseen Soul Lighter, and I'm going to be leaving the link down below if you guys are interested in getting it, and basically we're going to have a look through photos that, you know, have not been uh, published before or not really widely on the internet, and so it's interesting to see more of his work and with that piece more about his style, and obviously take lessons for us as photographers, but most importantly, live with a, a sort of blast of inspiration, let's put it this way, without being cliche. And so with that being said, um, I just want to take a minute to thank you all so much for the support to the channel and to my work. I really, really, really appreciate that. And yeah, I guess that just grab a drink, make yourself comfortable and let's go straight to another video. So in an age where photographers were mostly capturing their surroundings in black and white, Soul Lighter decides to photograph with colour. And through that, record in a very impressionistic and poetic way the vibrancy of mid-century New York. And one of the most admirable aspects of his photography is that the subjects are nothing but common day situations. People on their way to work, home, crossing busy streets, cars, window shops, signs during the various seasons of the year. However, what makes it so special is precisely the unique somewhat abstract way he captures it all. And when talking about Leiter's vision, there's three important aspects that come into play, in my opinion, and those are perspective, colour and texture, amongst others, of course. Because these three act as keys to understand his work. And on that note, his perspective is often one of a voyeur, who is focused on the details of an image where is, this is someone's hand, a shadow, a contrast or a specific brush of colour. And his perspective is one that looks into the lyricism or poeticism of a scene, almost like if we were to make a conscientious effort into capturing something beyond the scene. And of course the other aspects which I consider going hand in hand is colour and texture, because Leiter makes an intelligent use of drapes, shadows, glass, mirrors and lights to highlight certain aspects of a given scene. And colour here, especially when paired with the exploration of textures, becomes a sort of subject in the sense that it guides our eyes, which is why it's so important to study Leiter's work and other photographers who focus on casting a light, if you will, on formal aspects of the image, making them the main focus or concern in the photo which in turn shows us how photography has this ability of freezing moments in time and all its other classic attributes, but also that idea of turning the conventional into the unconventional. And so for those of you who probably are not as familiar with the career of Soul Lighter or, you know, just stumble upon this video and are interested in knowing more, I'm going to be leaving some uh, links down below for his video um, that I've made um, about a year ago and there's kind of like a, a video on the general aspects of his career, but I also like to documentaries and stuff that I can find. Um, a few documentaries I've found that are really, really good. But with that being said, Soul Lighter was also a painter, 
And so that obviously can be reflected in his photography, the attention to detail, the attention on texture and color, and the way they both play with light and shadow, etc. But to me, one thing that came to my mind when I was going through this book is sometimes I have this idea or this feeling of like the photo captures a lot more than just like the pure intention of documenting a scene. And what happens when, in this sense, a photo becomes more than what it is? And so the question here is, looking at these photos in the photography of Soul Lighter, they trans translate the atmosphere of a place or a scene or etc. And it's just a bit more poetic and not so much as a document. And so what happens when we have this type of photos, this type of material that goes beyond, in a way, what it is? What do we call that and how can we define it? And so I guess that that would depend a lot on everyone's subjectivity and what they find that, you know, is going beyond and above, um, you know, certain limits or certain borders of creativity. And so, yeah, I guess it is a good question. And so with that being said, if I had to answer this question, I would say that in this case, a photo becomes an impression. And it's interesting that when I googled the definition for impression, one of the first things I read was that it's an idea, feeling or opinion about something or someone, especially one formed without conscientious thought or on the basis of little evidence. And what's even more interesting is that when I read this definition, it reminded me of impressionist paintings. And looking at some impressionist paintings from the present and from the past, I believe that the similarities say it all. So for me, I would say certain photographers like Saul Leiter do have the ability of turning a recording into something more. In other words, instead of capturing something that can be defined in a concrete way, they capture a certain feel or atmosphere. Now, one argument that I think is, is very interesting when it comes to street photography, and honestly, it applies to photography in general. However, I would say that street photography is a very easy example to apply this to. And the question is, how can you, in a sea of people that, you know, go around the streets and, and capture, like, interactions and basically do their own street photography, how can you make your style stand out or how can you be unique, etc., etc., etc.? And so in a sea of, you know, online tweets, um, furiously written Reddit posts or YouTube videos with the title um, How to Make Your Photography Stand Out, how can it really stand out? And so I think that looking at this example of Soul Lighter, where we can take a lot of, um, you know, inspiration from, it is an interesting question to see how can you make your street photography different. For instance, if you're a street photographer, but generally speaking, how can you make your photography stand out as a photographer? So why don't we dive into that question? And the funny thing is that when I watch those videos and I listen to the answers of more established photographers to this same question, they all seem to point at the necessity of shooting from within and being genuine with whom we are. And so my take on this is precisely the same because you can take inspiration from someone like Saul Leiter, Joel Meyerowitz, but if you emulate their style without adding something that is truly yours, that comes truly from within, whereas that is impressions, feelings, memories that you've had or themes that you connect with because of your personal life experience or personal experience with the world, you're going to be like one of those painters in the business of fake art. They emulate someone's style and identity without cultivating their own. And so this is an interesting question, but to be honest with you guys, I did mention this when I did the video on the photography style and etc. And I'll link the, the video here somewhere. And I just wanted to say that, you know, this idea of style and stuff, obviously I use it for uh, title purposes. But if you watch the video, I say something along the lines of just the importance of being yourself. Because it is very true that in today's world, um, if it is a kind of like a trap if you feel like you're not being as recognized or as successful with your own style, you can kind of try to emulate other paths to success. But success is not necessarily numbers and, you know, um, recogni being recognized. It's more about contentment or personal contentment in this way. And so I feel like today's example is perfect for that because Soul Lighter, it 
took a long, long time. Like I said in the beginning of the video, he was in his 80s when his photography was rediscovered and he was made quote unquote popular. So it's not, it was not about that for him and that it, it was about the passion and what he wanted to kind of like just capture. And I think that's the more raw and the more, you know, true connection that I've seen um, in recent times when I look at uh, photography books. And that's why I've always had a great um, admire, I admire a lot Soul Lighter and people like Soul Lighter, of course. And I just kind of wanted to say that, you know, this is the end of the video. So I hope you enjoyed and thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel. It truly means a lot. And I know that I've said this, but I'll say it again because it's never too much. And also thank you for those of you that have been supportive of the prints. And if you want to grab a print, link will be down below. Um, and you're more than welcome to. I'm very happy with the way they turned out. And yeah, I guess that um, I'll see you here for another video very soon. So any feedback, anything, um, you know, in terms of like new ideas for videos, you're more than welcome to get in touch with me or to leave them in the comment box down below. And on your way out, you can also slap the like button or subscribe because why not? And so, yeah, I guess that I wish you to stay safe Keep shooting, film digital, whatever you do. And I'll see you here for another video very soon. So peace.